Um, but I think in the interest of time, we've got a really tight session here. So I'm going to kick off and, and people can join as they come in. But I wanted to say welcome, um, everybody. And good morning, uh, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are in the world. And thank you very much for, for joining this Impact Hive session. And I'm hoping that all the SOCAP main stage sessions that hopefully you've just come from uh, have inspired you into action, um, because this is going to be a highly interactive um, innovation session. Uh, well, be, well, we're aiming to really harness the power of your collective knowledge and experience in the room uh, to help an incredible impact entrepreneur to overcome a key barrier to scale. Uh, so as a quick introduction, um, my name is, is Jessie, uh, and maybe following on from uh, the inclusivity of the SOCAP uh, welcome session earlier, um, my pronouns are she, her, um, I'm a white woman with blonde hair, uh, wearing a black sweater uh, and a red necklace and sitting in the city of London uh, in front of a, a brick wall background. Um, and I'm also the global impact entrepreneurship leader at EY, which means I have the privilege of really leading uh, the work that EY does globally to support impact entrepreneurs through our Ripples program. Uh, and I'm, I'm joined today by Nazir. Nazir Pandor, who is the Managing Director of Live Clean, uh, which is an incredible enterprise that is providing access to clean, affordable sanitation and safe water across urban and rural Zambia. Um, and Nazir is an alumnus of our EY Ripples program and is also a SOCAP scholar this year. And you'll be hearing much more from him shortly. And you'll also be helping him to overcome one of his biggest challenges. Um, as you may know, um, EY is a global professional services firm. Uh, we have over 300,000 EY people um, based across over 150 countries. And typically, those people focus on helping multinational corporations and governments to address their biggest challenges. Uh, and EY Ripples, as you may have heard through the main stage sessions, is our global social and environmental impact program, which extends the value of EY knowledge uh, and expertise on a not-for-profit basis. And one of the focus areas of the program is extending our services to small and growing businesses with a social or environmental purpose. And, and that's the work that I'm lucky enough uh, to lead for EY. And one of the ways in which we support impact entrepreneurs is through impact hives, just like this one which we run around the world, uh, typically bringing together impact entrepreneurs like Nazir with groups of EY leaders and employees. Um, and we developed the methodology for these short targeted innovation events, these impact hives, through a collaboration with our wonderful friends at Unreasonable, which is an amazing organization, if you don't know them, uh, committed to repurposing capitalism um, by supporting its fellowship of growth stage entrepreneurs and by collaborating with institutions and organizations like EY uh, to solve global problems. And we designed these sessions together as a way to really mine the collective genius in a virtual room in a short amount of time to create really deep and lasting change by helping an impact entrepreneur unlock scale. And so we're really excited uh, to be able to leverage the depth and breadth of the SOCAP network and use this methodology to help Nazir and the Live Clean uh, business um, to innovate solutions to, to one of their biggest challenges. Um, so how is this going to work? Uh, first, we're going to start with a bit of a, an informal fireside chat so you can get to know Nazir um, and his business Live Clean, uh, understand the company vision, uh, the business and impact model, and really get an understanding of the context in which they're operating. And then we're going to turn it over to you, uh, the audience, through a facilitated brainstorming session focused around a specific challenge that Nazir is facing. Um, so for the next hour, um, I ask you to please imagine that you are a group of coaches um, working alongside our esteemed entrepreneur to find solutions. Um, so please be open, be supportive, uh, please approach without judgment. And also trust that your objective fresh thinking will be hugely valuable. And so we ask you to be fully present, as present as possible for the next hour, um, to sit on the edge of your seat, to lean in and really get ready to participate. Um, and finally, just before we move into the fireside chat, uh, just one quick note on timings, because we do only have an hour. Um, we know you'll have lots of fantastic ideas to share in the brainstorm, um, but we will have to be strict on timing so that we can make the session as valuable as possible um, for Nazir. Um, so with that, um, Nazir, thank you uh, very much for joining us at SOCAP today. And congratulations again on being a SOCAP scholar. Um, perhaps you could 
kick us off um, by sharing an introduction to yourself and also telling us a little bit about the Live Clean story uh, and how the business came about. Cool. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jesse, again. And um, welcome, everybody. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to all of uh, the people joining in. Um, first of all, I'm ecstatic to be part of this as obviously a SOCAP uh, member, but also alum of the Ripples Project with, with EY. I'm just stoked to be here and I'm stoked to share my story with you and for, for, for this platform to share, my, to share what we do with, 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 with everybody. So my name is Nazir Pando. Um, in, in accordance with what's been going on, uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. Um, I'm seated in front of or behind me is a brick wall and a picture there that's a pretty yeah. profound picture of uh, me and a bunch of colleagues uh, who had gone for a pretty amazing trip. Uh, water rafting. So it was an amazing time that we spent and we took this amazing group photo um, of amazing people that live in Zambia and work in Zambia, all working towards, um, you know, changing the inequality status of Zambia, right? Changing the economic status of Zambia and making sure that low income people and the underserved in general um, are served and are given a chance to, you know, um, do well in their lives or come out of poverty. And that's what Live Clean does. So the Live Clean story is we started in 2015 as an incorporated company. Um, and the idea behind it was, you know, when you look around and you go around the town, we are a low income country, right? When you go around the town, you get away from your home and you go into a market or you go into, you know, any part of the city and you find garbage all around, right? You find um, trash all around, you find uh, places that sewer, you know, sewage is just building up. And then you just take a walk around and you, and you get to think and say, I, I wonder what, they use for water. I wonder what they use for a toilet. I wonder what they use just to keep up with their hygiene status. So the company was built around to build um, this sort of these mass sanitation compounds that would help low income people access the simplest of human rights, right? For a lot of us who probably are joining in today, having access to a toilet and water is, is probably this thing that we just say, of course we have this, right? It's, well, and we couldn't have, we couldn't deal without it. But we're, have the luxury of having it. But a lot of people don't have that luxury. A lot of people do not even understand how to use a toilet, how to use, you know, um, running water, how to use basic hygiene, you know, products or even uh, their hygiene to solve their hygiene needs, especially for women um, who have to go through so much with their menstrual health and, um, and trying to keep up with, you know, with, with, hygiene, with hygiene standards. So that's why the company was built. And we, and we started off building um, these sites um, using containers, right? We have this massive container and put the toilets in there um, and water provisioned in there. And we place them in markets, especially where there is low infrastructure, low sanitation infrastructure, and where there is an, a clear need, right? We are a social enterprise. We are a profit-making company. And the idea behind that, you know, sort of financially is to grow the company. We feel like that's the best way to grow the company. That's the best way to scale. That's the best way to continue expanding. Um, and attracting different corporate entities, att att attracting different investors, attracting different people in a network that we can build this company, not just, you know, to make money, but uh, to, to, to scale, but also to expand, also to just help people, join in with people who want to help those who do not get helped every day. Um, and now where we are today, we've got five sites across Zambia, three of which are in the capital of Lusaka, two of which are in the northwestern province um, in a city called Solwezi. Um, and we get about 300 to 350 people per day through each site. Um, and we serve toilets, we serve water, and we serve different hygiene products that, that people can use at a very affordable price, below market price. And we make sure that our standards are exceptional. It doesn't matter whether we charge very little, but we do not compromise in our, in, in our provision, in, in how they look. Um, there was one a person who visited me um, from Europe and he said, when he walked by, he said, well, these toilets look like they could be at the side of the road in Germany. And that made me completely like, ecstatic because I was like, that's exactly what we're trying to do. So that's who we are. That's who I am. Um, I've traveled around the world and experienced so many different cultures, so many different people. Um, and it's just amazing that I can be able to speak to you, although be it virtually, I would have hoped, obviously hoped that this was in person, but due to COVID, obviously that's not possible. Uh, but I'm glad to be here and hopefully um, you can help me and also and we can have a really good interactive session. Thanks, Nazir. And such, as you say, such an important 
an important right that you're delivering to people. And, and I guess kind of one question um, in terms of the, the business model, because obviously you talked about the fact that you are a for-profit company. You do believe that's important um, to unlock capital, to be able to scale. Um, could you talk us through um, the business model in the sense of, is it the customer that pays? Is it the council? Is it the government? Um, how, does that, how does that work um, for Live Clean? All right, so from the start, we work with local government in the form of um, their councils and municipalities around the country. We work with them um, to be able to take over sites, um, their sites. So, so the, the gov local government are mandated by law that they should provide sanitation facilities um, for public places. Unfortunately, our government doesn't have the, resource, the resources to continuously maintain and operate them. So we found um, a chance to work with the local government because we you know, have those resources and that's what our company does, uh, to work with local government so that we can you know, take over their existing sites, manage them properly, operate them properly, um, and provide you know, the service to their people. The people we serve are you know, normal people, right? The Zambian population. Um, and, 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 and with that, uh, the business model is centered around mass provision direct to customer. Right. The customer is essentially Zamb the Zambian population or Zambian residents, low income residents. They pay directly to uh, Live Clean or to our sites to access um, these different products, whether it's water, whether it's toilets, whether it's showers, um, or whether it's hygiene products right? or different mobile money you know, services or different services that we incorporate, especially that's catered around the market in which we are located in. Um, so that's where B2C completely, um, but we just work with government to make sure that we expand our sites with the help of government, especially in reaching people that we would ordinarily not be able to reach without their help. And, and Nazira, you, you kind of shared a little bit in terms of the stage that you're at, in terms of the, the number of customers that you're serving, the number of sites. I think you said five sites across Zambia now. Um, and so you're obviously growing relatively quickly. And I, I imagine through that journey, you must have faced a number of a number of challenges, be it kind of on the impact side, be it in terms of the, how you interface with customers or the partnerships you have with governments or, or indeed kind of pivoting the, the business model. Could you maybe talk through um, some of the key challenges uh, that you've kind of faced over the years as you've tried to, to really prove the model and, and scale and also maybe um, how, you've, how you've overcome those, uh, those challenges? So I know we only have an hour. Um, otherwise, <laughs> if, if, if I could just go on and on, I'd probably take two days. I'd probably take the whole the, the whole conference to explain to your challenges. But I do know part of our part of our session here is that we're going to focus on one particular challenge. So I'll leave that to later. Uh, but some of the other challenges that we faced are, of course, accessing funding, global funding, whether it's international funding or even domestic funding. We found out that during our journey that sanitation or investing in sanitation hasn't been the sexiest thing to do. Right. It doesn't provide the quickest ROI. It doesn't you know, the return on investment. It doesn't provide the quickest, you know, hockey stick in your graph that says, you know, we can achieve a hundred million dollars in, in, in a year or two or something along those lines. That's maybe in microfinance that people can achieve that in or other types of businesses. Sanitation is just this thing that's just lingers around and says, hey, you know, let's help people. But no, you know, there's there's relatively low investment, especially when it comes to sub-Saharan Africa. There's a lot of places regionally in Africa that are being focused on, especially East Africa and West Africa, but sort of your Central Africa, your parts of Southern Africa, those are re not really, you know, sort of uh, penetrated through when it comes to international investment. So funding that we need to expand has been a bit of a challenge, but we're working through that, especially when we, you know, we work with the partners that we've been able to work with. We've worked with Innovations Against Poverty. Uh, we've worked with UK Aid um, or DFID at the time, which is now FCDO. Uh, we've worked with SNV, Netherlands Development Agency uh, or organization. So we've worked with these people. So what we do is we make sure that when we work with these investors, we show exactly what we can do. We hold a very, very high standard so that we not only get a good recommendation, but we have a good track record so that and whoever we work with down the line, they can be able to see that we're a trustworthy company, we're a trustworthy investment. We are people, you know, who you can trust in and know that we can take care of your funds. So that's so that's one challenge. Um, another challenge is obviously working with government. It's like I said, sanitation is not the sexiest thing, right? Obviously, the government has a lot of things they need to take care of. Poverty, um, you know, it's so many things they need to take care of. Infrastructure, um, you know, making sure the environment is good. All these things that they have to worry about. 
sanitation, maybe not so much, you know, historically in Zambia hasn't been really on their priority list. Um, so, you know, working with the government is to come in and say, open the, you knock on the door and say, hey, we're the sanitation company. Can you help us? And they're like, okay, so you're just providing toilets? What else are you doing? Uh, it's like, oh, that's, that's the whole point, right? It's giving people a chance to do something that they don't ordinarily have the chance to. But lucky enough, um, we have a new government that has been, you know, put in and they are very much eager to work, um, you know, with private sector to improve sanitation standards around the country. So that's how, very helpful for us, right? It's very helpful for us to know that we have a government ally who can help us achieve some of those goals. Um, and then the last one, obviously the last challenge is the one that we're going to face um, that everyone can join in and, and we can talk about. Well, that uh, it sounds like a good segue. So if we could bring up the first slide with the with the challenge statement um, and maybe while people are reading it um, as it comes up, Nazir, you could just yeah. share a little bit of context uh, to yeah. this to this challenge. Cool. So another challenge that we face, which which we thought, you know, would be the best, especially for this interactive session, is the cultural sort of um, barrier that we face in Zambia. Uh, when it comes to access to sanitation. Like I said, sanitation is something that, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a human right, it's a basic human right, yes. But it's something that, especially as a pay-as-you, you know, use service, hasn't been done before. It, it's not looked at as something that's essential. That's why our open defecation statistics are, are, are quite big here in Zambia, right? Especially for males, you know, for them to start getting money out of the of a very limited wallet size to use a urinal, they would be like, oh, I don't need to do that. I can just walk around the corner and, and, and you know, urinate on the, on the wall. Um, but then, you know, so that, so that was a big challenge for us is to, is to show people that, you know, not only is sanitation access important, not only is personal hygiene important. I mean, we're seeing this now in COVID times. And Zambia has been hit not just because of COVID, but has been hit with cholera in 2017. We had an outbreak in, um, in, in cholera in 2017. Um, and we've had different, you know, diarrhea infections have gone up and all these things that are, you know, I guess, joined in with sanitation or as a product of sanitation, if you don't have those in, that infrastructure in the country, you get all of these um, health issues that come about. So, you know, getting a population to say, yes, okay, this is important. We agree that this is important. That's number one. The number two, it's, well, you need to pay for it, right? Yes, this is a great thing. You have this amazing, you know, site in this market and it's great, but why do I have to pay for it? Why can't it be free, right? If you're really trying to help us, why can't you just make it for free? But it's, you know, explaining to people that's not really the case, but we have to, you know, scale a company, but they're not bothered about that. They just want to make sure that they can access something for the cheapest way possible. So for us, the biggest challenge, one of the biggest challenges was how do we get a population, a big sized population, to use sanitation and pay for this service, regardless of whether it's affordable or not? And how do we shift that cultural behavior, that cultural behavior change to become a normal, to become a norm, to become a thing of the past, to become something that is like, okay, not only will I pay for this service, I'm even willing to pay more for this service because this service is actually quite good or this service is actually quite needed. So that's where we, you know, that's, that's the question that's being posed to the audience today. And one that we have to tackle is, especially as we expand or scale, you know, we're going to enter a lot more different markets around the country. We're going to, you know, talk to a lot more different people from very different backgrounds, economic backgrounds, obviously, um, you know, different challenges that they face. Still a very limited wallet size. How do we get you to part ways with your money to use something that maybe you don't see as important? And Nazir, I guess, before we kind of open up to the group, I guess kind of one thing just to kind of test and I guess kind of affirm almost in this scenario um, that my understanding is that customers in this scenario can pay. So we're talking about an affordable service. So yes, cost is a factor. It always is. But we're talking about an affordable service. But here, I guess the, the challenge is cultural, uh, behavioral change. It's a 
difference to perhaps uh, thinking about a service based on quality um, that gives you um, a better service than perhaps uh, you know the free open defecation option that was there before is that is that kind of correct and maybe before we kind of open up um, to think about the solutions if you could share I guess a few more of your experiences around what are some of the behavioral blockers or the cultural blockers um, which you think are contributing to uh, potential customers um, not being willing uh, to, to kind of make payment? Okay, so before there is, you know, a cultural shift or, or before there is a behavior shift, right? What is behavior actually, um, you know, what what is it, What what where does it come from? Where does a be, any behavior come from? So a behavior sort of comes from where you are, the reality in which you live in. Um, and in, in the reality in which you live in, if say, for example, you're a, a woman aged 33 um, and you work in the market and you sell tomatoes every day, right? And you know when you start in the morning and you end in the evening, you probably make, and this is not even probably an, an exaggeration, but you maybe make what would be the, you know, the equivalent of $3 in that day as your profit. So now you have to go home with that. And, and when you walk home with that, you now have to start to check off what you need. Do you need to pay rent? Do you need to buy food? Do you need to buy, you know, cleaning products? Do you need to pay school fees? Do you know all of these things that you have to do as a family member uh, or as a man or woman of society who works to do, right? To be able to look after your families. So your wallet size is very, very small. It, 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 you don't get that much. Then here comes this, you know, need. As bio, biology dictates, we have to, we have to, you, you know, we have to urinate, or we have to do the number two, or we have to do something. We have to excrete our waste. Um, so either you hold it in before you leave the house, and you make sure you do everything that you need to do, and then you just suffer till the end of the day, and then you go home and you 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 <laughs> you, you excrete, or you go to your nearest uh, public facility and use that toilet. Now, if it's something that's charged, here you have this limited money, right? How do I part ways with my, when I already have to do all of these other things, there comes the first behavior, right? Do I find this important in my innate self? Do I find this important? Even if the answer is yes, right? Do I have that money to pay for it? Yes, it's affordable, but affordable can be also a very limit, a very relative, you know, statement, or it can be a very li li um, relative reality. So I'll either hold it in or I will start to pay for this. Now, when I pay for this, okay, this has been a good experience. Maybe this is something I can invest in, my own personal investment into myself. Next day, you do the same thing. All of a sudden, you're doing this three, four times a week. Then now your behavior starts to change. Prior to this, it's I'm going to use you know a, a back alley and I don't need to worry about my own dignity or I don't need to worry about anything. As long as nobody can see me, that's my behavior because I just do not have the money to do this. But now it's making sure people, even with that limited wallet size, how do they, you know, depart with that money to feel like personal hygiene is important. And COVID did help, right? It, it showed people that this is important. So we got a spike in users um, during our COVID time, which is really great. It's a great story to have as Live Clean. Uh, but we're still not obviously there yet in, in solving the entire problem. No, and thank you, Nazir, because I feel like just being centered in thinking like a customer and, and just that kind of how you brought that to life is just, I think, really important in terms of thinking about how to tackle this challenge statement. So right. I think now is a, is a good time to hand over the reins to the audience, and I can already see ideas coming through, which is fantastic. And what we're going to do now is invite you uh, to help Nazir to address this key challenge uh, through a facilitated brainstorming session. So the specific challenge statement that you can see see on your screen that we're innovating for is as follows. Uh, for populations not used to paying for sanitation, how might we create a sustained behavioral shift to ensure potential customers value a pay-per-use model for safely managed sanitation services? And we're going to have three rounds of brainstorming. First, uh, in this section, we're going to crowdsource as many ideas for solving this challenge as possible from you in the room. Then we're going to explore these ideas by upvoting the best solutions together and diving into one solution of Nazir's choice by inviting that contributor 
up onto the virtual stage, hopefully, if we can get the tech to work, <laughs> to share more about their ideas and discuss it live. And then we're going to finish by asking you to share one way in which you personally could support Nazir in taking the next step in his journey, uh, which could be anything from a warm introduction to someone in your network uh, through to sharing a, a useful resource. Um, so in this first round, we're going to give you four minutes as the audience to think about as many ideas as possible in response to this challenge statement and to type them into the session chat. And before I go on mute and maybe play a bit of a bit of music to give you the space and time to think, I'm just going to share a few quick tips. So firstly, please choose quantity over quality. And I know that might sound counterintuitive, but actually the more ideas you generate, the more likely you'll offer something incredibly valuable or unexpected. Um, please also defer judgment. Uh, I think too often we self-censor unnecessarily. So remove that filter for the next 30 minutes. We know you're not experts in Live Clean. You may not be experts in sanitation and you don't have all the context uh, you probably want, but don't let that hold you back. And finally, um, please also know that wild and wacky is very welcome. Um, and sometimes uh, the best idea is right next to the seemingly impossible one. So with that, I'm going to go on mute and I'm going to ask that you start thinking and typing your ideas into the chat. Thank you. 
fantastic. Um, I think if we could turn the music down a little bit, I can see some fantastic ideas coming through. And uh, and actually, I think they're still coming through. Um, lots of ideas around uh, community stewards, cross subsidies, freemium models, gamification, so many coming through. We actually, <laughs> we had an inkling that SoCat would be a great network um, to test this with. And you've, uh, you've proved us right, which is wonderful news. Um, so now what we're going to do is <clears throat> explore these ideas uh, by up voting the best solutions together um, and then asking Nazir to choose the idea that he's most intrigued by uh, and inviting that contributor to actually come up on the virtual stage with us uh, to share more about their idea and discuss it live with the group. Um, so uh, now what you should see um, is the challenge statement on the screen but a slightly different action for you um, and what we're going to do is give you another four minutes to go back and read through as many of the other ideas that have been shared in the chat as possible and to upvote those that you think are particularly interesting as a potential solution to Nazir's uh, challenge statement by liking them. Um, so you should be able to like the comments um, on the top by by hovering over and on the top right hand side liking these comments and I know that you're a very inclusive bunch uh, so you may have the desire to like all of the ideas um, but I would ask you that for the purposes of really prioritizing those that we think are the most interesting um, please do try only upvoting a maximum of three ideas and please also don't upvote your own. Um, and so while the group uh, is doing this, uh, Nazir, if I could also ask you in the background to also be reading through all of the ideas and in particular those that the group are, are helpfully upvoting for you um, to consider which of the top ideas you'd like to hear more about. Uh, and we'll come back um, to Nazir in a few minutes to learn which idea he'd like to explore further and to invite that contributor up onto the stage. So. For the audience, you may also want to use this time to, to perhaps quickly spruce yourselves up as well if you're still in your pajamas in case you are called upon to contribute. So please do keep reading through all of those solutions and for the next four minutes, um, upvote uh, those that you think are most intriguing. Perfect. So I can see uh, you've been liking them all with your 
upvotes. Thank you very much. And Nazir, hopefully you've had a little bit of chance to, to look through some of these ideas as well. Um, because what, we'd, uh, what we're now going to do is, uh, is turn over the decision to you, because you're the one that, that really matters. Um, if, there is, uh, if there is an idea that most intrigues you, um, that you think would be particularly relevant to Live Clean, um, it could be uh, community stewards, uh, I think cross subsidies I've seen a lot of, um, awareness campaigns, there's been a lot of really interesting ideas um, around awareness campaigns and really emphasizing the positive aspects, be it the safety aspects, the aspirational value. Um, let me know if you need a minute or so more to just go through and, and select um, a particular idea that jumps out at you that we'll explore further. Yeah, I'm, um, you can hear me, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, we can I, see and hear you. I, I did. I did have some technical issues. Um, so uh, thank you, everybody, for for amazing comments and amazing suggestions. Uh, they're absolutely brilliant. Um, for some of them, I do actually. We do actually do. Um, you know, we we have tested like you know, giving people cash prizes as what Joanne Hemmings had said. You know, having a loyalty scheme. We did do that, um, and we've done different schemes. There's there's some that I would I would sort of like to look at um by glenn cunningham that says de de deconstruct the elements of value you were selling privacy cleanliness um then first taking a break from your day that uh i guess maybe to find out more meaning behind that one it seemed a bit interesting Cool. Well, that sounds good. And, and Glenn, hopefully you're still on the call, because if you'd be willing to join us and just expand a little bit on your comments and your ideas and your solution, um, hopefully we can bring you onto the stage uh, in the background. Um, and maybe, uh, Nazir, if you could spend a little time um, whilst we're bringing Glenn up on stage, I guess just um, setting the context for why that idea kind of jumped out at you. Is it something that you've been thinking about? Is it something that you've tried and, and haven't been successful at within Live Clean? Is it something that you haven't tried? Um, it's, it's, it's intriguing because it, when, we, when we try to, I guess, do any culture shift or any behavior change, we try to make provide innovative ideas of how to change the mindset, how to make you know people see a different side of of sanitation or paying for sanitation. Um, so looking at this and saying, okay, um, maybe diving into what, how could we expand this taking a break from your day, right? That's That particular sentence is quite, is quite intriguing. Um, how do we make people feel like, you know, they can come to this to this site and not just feel like they're using a toilet, but feel like, you know, they're, they're part of an, a, a different world, right? Or they're part of a different, uh, feeling or have or have a different experience when using this facility. It's not just it's just not about providing a toilet, but doing something maybe more with your day and finding that this is a this this is a good thing to do and uh, throughout my busy my busy day. So that that particular line really intrigued me. Um, I'm I'm not sure if he's in he or she is in. Glenn, if you're interested to, to join, um, hopefully you should have the option to just click uh, join audio um, visual on the top right of your screen. So if you want to click um, that, you should be able to just pop up on screen with us and join us. And maybe if not, um, Nazir, is there another idea that's listed here that's kind of particularly yeah. intriguing for you? I like this one by, um, and, and, and please, by all means to everybody listening, when I sort of look at something, I love everyone's idea. So please do not think like, you know, I, I hate other ideas or I like others more than others. It's, it's just something that, you know, we're looking at and saying, how can I deep dive into something that maybe we've never done or something we've never even thought about. The other one that jumped at me was Pamela Cato, who said, can people with larger wallet sizes subsidize the services of those with smaller wallets? Right. So getting buy in, that's a really intriguing idea. So helping figure out how do I get somebody who's got better resources to help those on an individual level, on a corporate level, because we have we definitely try that. That's where that whole sanitation sexiness comes in. Uh, but, you know, individuals, people who have these things, have access to toilets all the time. How do we get you to, you know, pay for a service or, or engage with low income people to use a service that you think is normal? So that's a really intriguing one to me as well. 
Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for being so inclusive. <laughs> this year. Yeah. And I see we have Glenn with us. Wonderful. I'm so glad you managed to make it up the, up the steps onto the virtual stage. And, and thank you very much for contributing so generously um, and also being brave enough to join us. I can promise uh, the audience that this wasn't planted. So thank you for being so willing to, <laughs> to share with us, um, Glenn. It, and I wonder it if you definitely could... wasn't planted and I want to make sure the <laughs> expectations go way down. <laughs> Oh my God! The last thing I had in mind was hopping onto a global. Well, welcome. Stage we're very, we're morning. very glad you're here. And maybe, Glenn, if you want to spend um, a minute or so, just giving a, a very quick introduction to yourself, but also, most importantly, if you could just share a little bit more about your idea to bring it to life, and we'll just have a very kind of quick conversation just to unpack it a little bit more with with Nazir. Of course. Uh, and first off, huge props to all the uh, candidly amazing good ideas all the way through. I think Nazir is being very kind. Uh, I'm over at uh, the Harvard Kennedy School at the moment. I'm a career coach to graduate students in Harvard's uh, different degree programs. I work with a lot of students who are incredibly keen to create um, really powerful impact in the world, either through investing or other great uh, great vectors. Um, so I'll pause there. Uh, I've done a little bit of consulting back in the day in my own uh, prior to uh, coming into higher education. Uh, so diving in on, onto this idea, uh, Nazir, I, I, love the, I love the business model and I, and I love the idea. I feel like it's, um, it's got a tremendous amount of sort of leg room. And I guess for me, I was sort of thinking, I, one of my favorite sayings, and, and I, I ascribe it to either Winston Churchill or the Queen, but it was that idea of never refuse the opportunity to go to the bathroom, right? Because for me, um, it, it's often been sort of like, oh, you know, I get to sort of, you know, step out from whatever it is I'm doing, I get to, get to do a little bit of reset. Um, and, and I think maybe, you know, maybe there's an angle there that that's sort of, um, you know, rather than, I mean, obviously, to your point, we all have, you know, these sort of the, the, the dominant sort of biological needs, but, you know, potentially put, you know, unpacking all of the different ways that this has, has value to your potential customers. So, you know, so maybe there's some people out there who, you know, I, I think of the cigarette break back in this sort of 70s, 80s and 90s. Well, it was it, it was obviously fine to go take a cigarette break. So, and that became a, you know, not just a, a break from your work, but also a little mini social community. You knew your three or four best friends who went and you had a smoke with them together. Um, and you, you got to sort of uh, reset a little on your day, um, may, you know, to the extent that, and again, I don't know all of your um, offerings, but to the extent that there's clear, clean water available to drink, that you're not just sort of washing yourself with it potentially, you know, it's sort of a, there's an angle for sort of a, you look at a, ref, a refresh break uh, rather than just a bathroom break. Um, to the extent that you know, uh, you know, Americans love to talk about this idea of the water cooler, right? Like the, the sort of chit chat that happens around a uh, you know around a um, uh, uh, a water cooler, and I could see something similar potentially, you know, possibly happening there. I wonder, you know, I wonder is there a way to sort of partner with any other uh, business owners who, you know, maybe if you're generating a little more foot traffic because of this enforced by an odd, could, could you sort of tie in with them and get some sort of, you know, s get some sort of partnership from them or sort of uh, angle around like, oh, you know, you need to go to the bathroom, maybe you swing by and pick up something else too, whether it's, some, you know, a stick of gum or, um, you know, wh whatever it might be that people tend to sort of buy as a snack. Um, yeah, I think I think there's a lot a lot there, but I'll pause there because I'm talking a lot. Cool. <laughs> Hi, Glenn. Um, again, uh, yes, it wasn't planned, but I'm I'm very happy to to, to meet you, um, and thank you so much for your comment and 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 and, and for your feedback. Um, I really like that. I think it's I think it's a fantastic way to look at things, especially, you know, as business owners, we're very stubborn, right? I'll say this upright: we're we're very very stubborn people because we think we know everything. And we don't want to tell people, you know, we don't want to hear from people and say, ah, oh, you don't know what we're, you don't know what we're facing. You don't know what we're going through. We've tried everything. Uh, but as business owners, we have to face the reality that we don't. And we have to look at and say, hey, you know, some people have amazing ideas that we could try. And what you're saying really makes a lot of sense for us because, you know, we have gone to corporates and said, can you help us, you know, can, uh, can anyone hear me? Can, can you hear me? Okay. We can hear you. Uh, yeah, you know, can you help us, you know, um, expand our revenue model by by advertising with us, you know, making our sites visible for your company logo or, you know, what your company is about. 
But what you've said maybe brings us a, di a different question to ask the corporates or the different question to ask as, you know, um, different individuals to say, how can you sponsor something that doesn't have to do with money? Can you sponsor something that says, gives a token of, of appreciation to a user that uses a toilet? Sort of like when a child goes to a dentist and they get a lollipop type of thing. Um, here's a little nugget for using a toilet um, because maybe for now we have to thank you because you're actually doing something, even if we're helping you, but you're actually doing something for your personal health and for, you know, you know, for yourself. But here's, here's a little token of appreciation. And having the corporates, you know, whether it's giving water, because um, here, you know, different things are, are, are important to different people. You know, in low income areas, cigarettes are important to different people. Water is important to different people. Um, having a drink that they would ordinarily, or ordinarily not have because they just don't have the money to afford different things. So that's a really fantastic idea. Um, and, you know, being able to show our sites that it's not just a toilet, it's, 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 it's a it's a lifestyle. That's what I get from your comment, Glenn. Right? It's telling people this is a lifestyle. Going to a dentist is a lifestyle. You know, um, taking a break from work around the yeah we call it the water cooler conversations, but it's not about the water cooler, right? It's about the experiences you share with your colleagues when you're around that water cooler, right? That mental break, your know, health break from work is important. It's a lifestyle. So sanitation should be a lifestyle. So I, I really think that's an amazing uh, concept and something that I've written down. Um, and, I, and I hope I can expand that. And, you know, hopefully at some point we can connect and we can expand on, on talking about that later on, obviously way after SOCAP's um, conference. But no, I really thank you for that, uh, for that comment. And it's really got me to, to thinking about how to approach uh people with money <laughs> or people with things that can <laughs> people with things that can that can help that can help our company so yeah it's, thank you for that and i think it's also glenn just tying into a number of the other comments it's about that aspirational lifestyle as well you know rather than well i guess it's the different value components some of them may be functional others of them may be aspirational value that can be just as important in some cases more valuable um, than others in terms of that narrative and changing both consumer or partner behaviors um, as well glenn any final thoughts you wanted to share in terms of just building on nazir's comments before you leave us um well again quick thanks and and look maybe a little bit about this idea of signaling like that you know you, you talked about how sort of companies can signal the value the value to their employees maybe sort of to individuals maybe they're signaling you know sort of this is my way of signaling sort of we're moving on up this is my conspicuous consumption um thing uh where you know okay maybe i'm not holding the sort of sexiest new phone but